Katumba here, it's time for us to take a look at our insight. Now, I must say something about the clip that you've just watched. These are very tricky decisions to make, oftentimes very difficult. It's like he said, it's like someone telling you in your tools, right? And you're thinking, hmm, where do I start from? Well, moving on. But you know, sometimes you need to weigh in what's more important than the other. It's probably so that you can find yourself in a better place. It's okay to give yourself the luxury, but then also sometimes it's okay for you to save for a better uh, place one day. That way you can have the luxuries. But real quick, uh, moving on to our insight, what we're looking at here, or what we're going to be looking at is cottage industries. Hmm. Very interesting. We've heard about the Asian world and how best they've made businesses, how they've become better, the economy is better because of things like this. And with me in studios is Stefan Adinitwe, who is... Uh, most commonly known as business doctor on UBC uh, West FM. And he's with us today. He's going to be talking about a couple of things. But he's having two robes that he's wearing today. He's also executive director, Aztec Social Innovations Hub. Very interesting. You're very welcome. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you for making time with us. As far as I know, uh, it, it sometimes people get a little bit busy, you know, with a lot that's going on, and I know you're busy. But let's talk about Aztec. What is Aztec? Okay, thank you so much, mm. dear viewers. Uh, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Mm. Yeah, my name is Stephen mm. I'm the executive director at mm -hmm. Aztec Social Innovations Hub. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, Aztec, it's a, a social enterprise. Mm. What we do, we are promoting entrepreneurship. Mm. Cottage industries, mm. vocational skills, financial literacy, mm. that's uh, mentoring and community outreach. Mm. So generally we support communities, especially women and the youth, mm. uh, to learn something that can, they can be able to start up at small scale or medium scale, mm -hmm. and tomorrow they graduate as a big factories and industries. Very interesting. Yeah. But now that we're talking about cottage industries, what are cottage industries? Do you have uh, when we talk about uh, cottage industries, mm -hmm. one, we are looking at uh, possible income generation activities that mm -hmm. we can do at small and medium scale, mm -hmm. starting from your home. Like okay. you can sit home, you make soap, you can sit home, you make juice, you can sit home, make a uh, jewelries, mm -hmm. all those are quite small industries. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, everything that grows big starts as small. So automatically when we talk about cottage industry, mm -hmm. if you know you are manufacturing something at any level, you're already in the industry. Mm -hmm. Yes. Very interesting. Uh, back, back in the day, well, I think it's the same thing. Hmm. But maybe back in the day when, when growing up, I used to see uh, uh, sometimes my mom and I think she still does if she wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do soap like you know liquid soap and then she mm -hmm. would do candles I, I don't think we ever bought candles at home <laughs> <laughs> and that's good in case you know but today really uh, it's very rare is this something that you think has been adopted you know over the years as um, I can say as far as Uganda we are concerned mm -hmm. cottage industries have been not actually adopted much mm. Reason being, we are consumers mm. and we have less f uh, producers. But other countries, when you look at a country like China, you look at a country like ASA, mm. cottage industries, what is actually, that's what is making them very stronger. Stronger things, yeah. uh, In Uganda, the challenge we have actually begins from uh, the foundation mm -hmm. that we, that the current generation is finding. Mm. Because everything starts with education and the education is categorized in two two mm -hmm. there is what you call form education and inform education mm -hmm. that you may be knowing how to dig that's a skill but you don't have a paper showing that you know how to dig okay, yeah. now it brings this mentality that when you tell a child today that you go and become an entrepreneur start manufacturing something that is now vocation and the uh, S most Ugandans, I'm sorry to say this, but uh, they have this mentality that if you branch off for vocation, then you are a failure. Mm. So they believe that to say that I'm successfully educated mm. should be having a degree or a diploma or a certificate on paper mm -hmm. with a grade one or class uh, two. Mm -hmm. That's when now you're And those that have the papers ah, don't want to ah. be associated. But then you find this person, 
mm. knows how to make candles, mm. knows how to mix milk and get ghee, mm -hmm. knows how to make soap. Mm -hmm. Those are, that's the now education, actually, that's the real education. But then again, let me ask you, mm. because, yes, like you've talked about our education system and all of that, we have our young graduates who are seated at home. But you there tell someone, mm. go, maybe start up a business like this, like that, or make soap or make that, and they're thinking, No, you're going do very far. Sing? Don't blame the graduates. Mm. They are not inspired. <laughs> Me, one of the things <laughs> where I'm proud to be who I am, <laughs> I have inspired because I lead by example. Mm -hmm. You find the, uh, a teacher teaching chemistry. Chemistry, actually, even both at Olive and A level, mm. there's a, a, a module or a topic to learn about soap manufacturing. Physics, it is there a lot of electricity. But the same teacher was teaching soap, a student, at the end of the month, if the salary delays by two days, they ha he has to protest the salary has delayed. Mm -hmm. Meaning that this teacher has no other alternative source of income, yet has a skill in manufacturing soap. Exactly. He's teaching students. So how will you <laughs> really convince <laughs> me that Gwandi... Like I'm teaching you how to make soap. Mm -hmm. One makes soap, you make money. Yet you yourself, you are crying, you are poor. Yet you are teaching. So how are you going to, to make me rich <laughs> when you are poor? That is very So that's what I'm saying. Mm. The whole system is, we need to start with the mindset. Mm -hmm. The mindset starts from the parents, where the children come from. Mm -hmm. Even the parents should be an example. If you are doing other jobs, mm -hmm. have something you can manufacture the, at the home. Parents, because mm -hmm. when these kids are growing from one year almost onwards, mm -hmm. they start adopting what is at home. You know, there was a time <laughs> when there was a trend, eh? and your parents would decide for you, mm -hmm. I want you to do this course, I want you to do sciences, I want you to do this. <laughs> that was the uh, thing. Forgetting that, that there are certain things that also come along and play oh. in, in the picture. Of course, mm. now, by then they are very right, <laughs> because that is the century which, for then. Mm. But this is the 21st century, mm -hmm. where we have, we are living in a dot-com environment. Mm. The uh, technology has increased, mm. the jobs that were being, to, uh, you could find that a job is being done, done by 10 uh, people, yeah. now there are only two people, the rest of the cameras are If watching. you aren't a doctor, then you are not. Yeah, uh, and two, another thing, by then you have to know that the population, Mm -hmm. was a bit low, mm -hmm. meaning that also the, co the competition was not too much on the job market. Mm -hmm. And uh, not every job actually that can earn you income. Mm -hmm. Because you may end up getting a job, you graduate, you get a job mm -hmm. paying you 300000 mm -hmm. per month. Mm -hmm. But again, you live in Tebe. Every day you are using so five. To, yes, you are using think, again about five almost thousand. about five thousand. Mm -hmm. You have to buy airtime. You have to also eat. Mm -hmm. So you are spending actually three hundred every month. But that's what you are earning. Mm -hmm. So if you get that salary, it means you are actually paying back the debts. Mm -hmm. You are not earning anything. <laughs> so you won't move, oh, and you remain very comfortably knowing mm -hmm. that I have a job of three hundred. Mm -hmm. which is not really which right. Is, which is not very relevant yeah. as well. Okay, now let's look at the, the fact that we, we hinted on Asian countries having adopted uh, the cottage industry mm. you know, style or model way of earning money. Uh, China, for example, Singapore, most of the Asian countries really. And uh, I, that was surprising, uh, mm, mm. even before you go to those countries. Mm. <laughs> what is surprising, most of the raw materials used to make things that we actually purchase expensively. Mm -hmm. The raw material is from here. from here. Let me tell you, Uganda is a blessed country. Mm -hmm. If you know Tom and Jerry ice cream, mm. if you have happened to be in London, mm. there is Tom and Jerry ice cream. Mm. The raw material is got here in Ruimi, here in Ikasese. Interesting. That's why they, because it is made out of vanilla, mm -hmm. and they grow a lot of vanilla that side. Mm. So imagine, here in Uganda, one of the opportunities we have is the environment. Mm. One political stability, mm. two, that uh, Uganda is one of the countries with a lot of challenges. And now for information, mm. we as entrepreneurs, we think oppositely. Where there is a challenge, that's why <laughs> that's there is why, money. Uh, mm. Of which it is opposite for a common person. A common person feels like should get money on silver plate. Mm. Show me where there is rubbish, I'll tell you that's money. Because mm. rubbish, it is uh, a resource. You can... Well, you recycle rubbish, you get electricity. Mm -hmm. You can recycle rubbish, you get paper bags. You can recycle rubbish, you get charcoal briquettes. That's eco-friendly charcoal briquettes. You can recycle rubbish, 
-hmm. you get a lot of bids if it is a, like paper waste. Mm -hmm. Now, like now, uh, this year I have launched a project called uh, uh, Save the Stuchy Girl. Mm -hmm. Reason being, you find many girls around the streets of Kampala. Yes. But trust me, one of the things I, the research I've made, mm -hmm. when the university is closed, these girls are very few on the streets. Yes. When universities open, there are very many. Mm. What does it imply? Mm. Somewhere there's a problem. Now, me, my question as an entrepreneur, I'll have to ask, where do these girls go to the street? They are looking for money, whether they like it or not. Where do you use the money for? Mm. They use the money to buy good earrings, to buy uh, clothes, pads, hair, to dresses. buy, to make good hair. Mm. What about, I teach this girl how to make her own earring, mm -hmm. her own craft, her own jewelry, her own craft shoe. Mm. She puts it on, whatever she admires, she can actually make it, put For it herself. on, and also sell it. Indeed. That's a cottage industry. Mm. You are it's, it's, you dressing yourself, you are selling to other people. As you are selling, you are getting money in your pocket. Mm. As the business grows, you start paying the tax, you are mm. contributing to national development. That is very true. But is this something we can actually adopt? It's, or it's going very, to take a while? very possible. It's all mm. about the attitude. Mm. Because you see, as I told you from the beginning, the foundation, mm. the, that is how people, the current generation is growing, knowing that for us in Uganda, to be educated is to have a, a degree, a certificate, a diploma on paper. So if I have my paper and I have my first class or second class, well, I'm done. So I'm successful. But you are successful. Where are you living? Mm -hmm. What kind of life are you living? What are you using I, like as part of your education to transform the community. Mm -hmm. Can you use your knowledge? If you did computer science, can you really even assemble a computer? Maybe you put up a workshop for yourself. Mm -hmm. So all those are the challenges we are looking. So we, what I'm fighting hard through my organization, as Tech mm -hmm. Innovations Hub, is to change the mindset. The problem is not Uganda. Mm -hmm. The problem is not the government. The problem is actually not the people. The problem is the mindset, mindset yeah. of the ones who are supposed to be the role models are also living not mm. as examples. <laughs> that is very true. So no okay, one we've, we've been another. hitting on a couple of challenges, but now more in detail, those things that are actually slowing down, mm. you know, in, in regards to the uh, adopting to this. Now, project. number one, mm. I want to thank uh, the government of Uganda, mm. specifically uh, NRM as uh, the party in uh, control mm -hmm. for introducing one paper three entrepreneurship mm -hmm. at the uh, high school level. Number two, for introducing for promoting vocationals by introducing scaling Uganda as a, a program, mm -hmm. and uh, also for considering that uh, actually innovations should be considered. Mm. That's why you see now there's Minister of Innovations and Technology. Yes. And I appreciate that. Yeah. I'm sure through those channels already the government has played its part. Mm. Also, parents and the children, let also them play the, their role. And their role is to support mm. a child. You know, a child, there is a challenge. You put 10 million at school, mm. paying for this kid at university, has done, uh, for example, uh, food technology, mm -hmm. after university tells you that mommy, daddy, assist me with only one million, million, I want to start up what I started. Then you actually become rude. You say, no, I paid a lot of money at your school. How do you, already over 10 millions. Now you mm -hmm. want one million more? No, 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 go and look for a, jo for a job. <laughs> this kid gets frustrated because yes. he's not being supported. Mm -hmm. So it's everyone's uh, responsibility to actually lead by an example. Even you as a parent, mm. even as an uncle and aunt, have a skill. If these kids are at home, let us also, let them come, we engage them. Trust me, mm. by the time we find that every, at least out of 10 families, six families have an enterprise. Mm. Then that's at family level, it goes to village level, to district level, national level, Automatically, we are grown until we are going to achieve it. There's no question. About there's, there's no question because yeah. the but population mm. is too high. Mm -hmm. Jobs uh, are there only that if you don't know what to do. Competition. Men can well. say Uganda it has, it has no jobs. Uganda has jobs only that it has no jobs for people who don't know what to do. You go to university, you pay money for to do for you a paper. Meaning that if you come and get this job, 
you don't qualify for it. You don't have the skill. You didn't do it yourself. Mm -hmm. So when you come and I give it to you, you fail to do what you studied, I will have to dismiss you. You have lost the job and you'll start crying. crying. I don't have a job. But mm -hmm. you got it because you got it in a long way. You didn't really do what you were supposed to do for you. You mm -hmm. just bribe. Uh, I, I, I keep telling people, <laughs> however much you bribe, you get somewhere. Yes, you still you have to be the one to do the work. So no one's going to do the work for you. Yeah. Someone has to notice. Oh. So this person can't do this. At the end of the day, it, is, it comes back down to your hard work. Uh, speaking of hard work, I know you've uh, been hard at work <laughs> on mm, the ground. I, I don't believe uh, much in hard working. Mm. I believe much in smart work. In smart working, yes. impressive. Uh, but uh, what, what a few as Aztec faced, you know, in terms of what challenges have you faced as you trying to get the people to understand okay, that this is Okay, thank you so much. Uh, one, as Aztec, mm. uh, I learned an academy. Mm. That's a mentoring academy. Mm -hmm. One, we are not a, a vocational organization. Okay. And we have an academy where we mentor from. Mm. Two, we also get invitations. We go to communities, find them where they are mm. through other partner organizations. Mm. And when we go there, we are able to train people that we find there, actually using their own local resources. Okay. Then at the same time, we organize public events. Like we say we have a gathering, mm -hmm. like uh, next month from 10th up to 15th, mm -hmm. I'm uh, conducting a training of trainers mm -hmm. for specific cottage industries. Okay. So the challenge I normally face, or which you face as an organization, is actually to show people that, no, vocational skills and income generation activities, they are not for people who failed mm. or who are failures. But these are supplement source of income that you can do even as if you, even if you have any other job. You can teach someone at home, can be your relative, anyone does it as you're doing your official job. Because when you look at developed countries, I have one of my mentors when I was in South Africa, he really inspired me. He's called Sir Richard Branson. He's a, uh, he's a, a celeb. He owns a Virgin Group of count, uh, companies. Oh. He owns 400 companies. When you, you read the stories of successful people, they don't only run one company. They have more than 10. Mm. So now here, when we get one car job, we become comfortable and we feel like <laughs> now we are done. Oh, we're done. And that's <laughs> what is killing our people. So mm. that's the mentality we are trying to remove. Mm. I believe it's not easy. It's not an easy journey to change people. Mm. But as I told you, if you are leading by example, okay. automatically people have to adopt. Okay. And with the support from you people, mm. media houses, we need you because mm. people need to know this information. The media needs to change the way yes. they're doing things now. But real quick, because of time, what if, if, if we're talking cottage industries, honestly, if you're t telling someone, well, cottage industry is the way to go, what are those things we're looking at, the positives that would come with it? One, if we are talking about cottage industries, mm. we are saying, learn a skill, mm -hmm. start your own business, oh. employ other Ugandans. So you have got out of poverty, you have steady income generation, a source of income, mm -hmm. and at the end of it, at the same time, mm. uh, you have a high chance that actually you are going to employ very many people and even your generation, the children you are going to produce, I don't think my children will ever look for a job. Mm -hmm. Even the grandchildren, because once even if you leave the, the you leave the what? Mm. Even if you leave uh, the territory, okay. the people who will be following you, would ha already they would have adopted. So okay. they will continue learning the what? The enterprise. Okay. Yeah. Finally, on this particular issue, I know you've had a couple of trainings, but finally on the issue of cottage businesses. I know we've run out of time, yeah, but we can always come back of and, course. and discuss these things. <laughs> and yes. of course, from here, even I'm <laughs> switching to our own radio, UBC Western oh, Kahuna, nice. Definitely. we continue teaching the country. Okay, <laughs> so finally on this. So finally, dear viewers, all I want to say, mm. thank you so much, uh, one, for Develop for loving Uganda <laughs> by waking up, you go to work. Mm. That means you love Uganda. Mm. And I want to I encourage everyone adopt, learn a skill. Learning mm. a skill, it's like getting a candle to light another candle. Mm. For those of you who need these trainings, feel free to always uh, really reach me. And uh, on the 10th up to 15th of February, mm. I'm conducting a training of trainers specifically to teach create other more trainers like me.
Okay. Otherwise, thank you so much for hosting me. <laughs> I'm so happy. No, it's very good. And it's, uh, it's very for those good who want to always get, you can always find me at, at UBC. Just reach the gate to say, I'm looking for business doctor. <laughs> <laughs> For yes. good in my country. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, very commonly known as business doctor on UBC West FM, but he's also wearing two robes, like I mentioned earlier on. He's executive director, Aztec Social Innovations, uh, Innovations Hub, rather, and that is uh, Stephen Alinitwe. And he's been talking about the cottage industry and what it means to us, also changing our mindset. Now, real quick, we're taking a look at our business personality. Yes. Born 20